In this video, we are going to study two more functional blocks, uh, the multiplexers and the demultiplexers. Uh, they are completely the opposite in their operations. Uh, multiplexer uh, has uh, N control inputs, uh, which are called the selection inputs, and the two to the N uh, information inputs, uh, and then one output. How does this work is as follows. Depending on the control inputs, one of the information input is directly connected to one single output. So this is called a multiplexer. So here is an example of a 4 by 1 multiplexer. Here we have two numbers to specify the size of the multiplexer. So first number 4 is number of inputs and then the next number is always 1, that's the number of outputs. Then from the number of inputs we can deduce the number of selection signals. So 2 to the n should be 4, so then 2 to the 2 is a 4, so we have two selection signals. 4 by 1 multiplexer, one of the input is directly connected to Y depending on selection signal. So if a selection signal is a 0, 0, then input 0 is directly connected to Y, which means if input 0 is a 0, output is a 0. If input 0 is 1, then output is a 1. And then the selection signal is a 0, 1, then input 1 is a direct connected to output. If input uh, selection inputs are 1, 0, then input 2. If selection inputs are 1, 1, then input 3 is directly connected to the output. So if we explain that using a block diagram, this is 8 by 1 multiplexer. Since we have 8 inputs, uh, we need uh, 3 selection inputs. Uh, 2 to the 3 is 8. Uh. And how does this work? Is, uh, if a selection signal is a 0, 0, 0, then 0 input, labeled as A0 here, is directly connected to Y. If, input, if selection input is 0, 0, 1, then 1 input is a uh, directly connected to Y, and so on. So here is a truth table. Simplify the truth table for that. Depending on selection inputs, uh, output is directly connected, uh, forwarded uh, from one of the input. So for example, if a selection input is a 0, 1, 1, then binary number 1, 1 is 3, so input 3 is uh, directly connected uh, to the output. Demultiplexer is a completely the opposite operation of a multiplexer. So we have a one single input and then many outputs. Uh, depending on the number of outputs, uh, we have a certain number of a selection signals. Uh, depending on input selection signals, uh, the single out input is uh, connected to one of the output. So for example, in this case, 1 by 8 demultiplexer. If a selection input is 0, 0, 0, then input is directly connected to 0 output. Which means if in input is 0, 0 output is 0. If input is 1, 0 output is 1. If selection input is 0, 0, 1, then input is connected to Y1. So 0, 0, 1, then input is connected to Y1, and so on. So this is a demultiplexer. Using multiplexer, you can implement uh, arbitrary Boolean functions, uh, which is uh, some uh, uh, of a practical use. Uh, so we are going to study this one a little bit detail. So the basic idea is that given number of variables for the function, then some of the variables are connected to the selection input signal of the multiplexer, while the rest of the inputs are connected to the input of the multiplexer. So here, let me explain using an example. Suppose we have a three variable function, which has a mean term 1, 2, 6, and 7, 
then we can implement this function using 4 by 1 multiplexer. 4 by 1 multiplexer has a two selection inputs. Uh, so we assign most significant positions uh, of the variable to the selection signal. So since we have two selection signals, uh, so X and Y are connected to those two selection signals. S1 is the most significant bit, so X is connected, and S0, Y is connected. The operation of the multiplexer is uh, as follows. Uh, if you re refresh your memory, if a selection signal is a 0 and 0, then 0 input is directly connected to the output. Then how do we implement uh, the function f using multiplexer is uh, by examining the truth table. So given the function, first uh, construct the truth table. So here x, y, z is in input variables and the y is the function. So we construct the truth table for that. Since x and y are connected to the selection signal, when x and y are zeros, uh, then zero input is connected to the function uh, output of the multiplexer. So in this truth table, first the two rows uh, have uh, zero and zero for values of x and y. In this case, uh, function is a zero and one. So 0 and 1 is uh, directly dependent upon the value of a z. So if uh, x, y are connected to the selection signal, then x and y are 0. We know that input 0 is directly connected to f. So to achieve a function f, uh, we should have uh, 0 and 1, which is same as a z. So in input 0, we connect z directly to that. In the next two rows, uh, we have a uh, value 0, 1 for x and y. When x and y is uh, 0 and 1, then input 1 is connected to the output. So in this case, a uh, function should be 1 and 0, which is opposite of z. So we connect a complement of z on input 1. When x and y are 1 and 0, input 2 is directly connected to the output, then expected uh, function values are 0 and 0, so we simply connect a constant 0, which is a ground voltage to input 2, and then the remaining two rows, uh, when x and y are 1 and 1, what you expect as a function is uh, always 1, so constant 1 is directly connected to input 3. So this is how to implement uh, uh, any boolean function with a multiplexer. Another example is a four variable boolean function. We have a, b, c, d, four variables, and then here are a list of min terms. So first, uh, we construct the truth table for the function f, uh, and then we are going to use 8 by 1 multiplexer. 8 by 1 multiplexer is three selection signals, uh, so we assign those variables uh, from most significant position A, B, and C to selection signals. The multiplexer operation, as we know, when uh, selection signals are 0, 0, 0, then uh, 0 input is connected to the output. By examining the truth table, first the two rows uh, have a value 0, 0, 0 for ABC, then expected the output of the function is a 0, 1, which is the same as a D, so D is a directly connected to input 0. When selections are 0, 0, 1, which is next to two rows of the truth table, we expect a function F the same as D, so D is a connected to input 1 again, the next two rows, uh, ABCs are 0, 1, 0, which is uh, the input 2 is uh, connected to the output. Then expected uh, function values is uh, 1, 0, which is a uh, complement of uh, input D. Uh, so we connect inverter 
and then connect it to input 2. Next two rows, A, B, C are 0, 1, 1, and then input 3 is connected to the output, and the expected function is a 0 and 0, so we connect a 0 directly to input 3, and input 4, we connect a 0 to the in, uh, input of the multiplexer, then input 5, uh, it's the same as D, so D is connected again for input 5. For input 6 and 7, expected function output is always 1, so we connect a constant 1 on input 6 and 7. So in this way, we implement a 4 variable Boolean function using 8 by 1 multiplexer. Another technique which has a, a more realistic uh, value or a practical value is that uh, designing the boolean function with a less size of the multiplexer. Here at the multiplexer, for variable function, we have a multiplexer which is a three selection signal. Another technique is that we can design a boolean, four variable boolean function with a two selection signal, so multiplexer. That's on next slide. So here, ideas are very similar, but we add some uh, external gates on the input side of the multiplexer. So we have again the same uh, four variable boolean function. So we construct a truth table, but in this in this time we use a four by one multiplexer, which has only two selection signals. As we know. Uh, selection signal 0, 0, that 0 input is connected. Since we apply only two variables to the selection signal, so we group the uh, truth table by 4. So here, the first four rows of the truth table, A and B are common, 0 and 0. So A and B are 0 and 0, that 0 input is directly connected to F. So the first four rows are expected the function is a 0, 1, 0, 1. So what we need to supply on input 0 is a something that could produce a 0, 1, 0, 1, depending on changes of C and D. So 0, 1, 0, 1 is same as a D. So we connect the D directly on input 0. When A and B are 0, 1, which is next uh, four rows of the truth table, 0, 1, then input 1 is uh, connected to the output. So uh, in that case, the expected function is uh, 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0. So how do you produce a 1, 0, 0, 0 given C and D, which is a uh, C and D or inverted? Uh, then we can produce a 1, 0, 0, 0, which is a NOR function. So what you supply on input 1 is a NOR of a C and D. Then when A, B are 1, 0, then input 2 is directly connected to the output, then expected a function is a 0, 0, 0, 1, then 0, 0, 0, 1, you can make it out of a C and D if you apply and the function. So C and D and the function of a C and D is a directly connected to input 2. And the A, B's are 1 and 1. Then input 3 is directly connected to F. The expected function is always 1, so constant 1 is directly connected to input 3. Actually, I wrote those uh, Boolean expression here in actual implementation. Here, this one actually represents uh, AND gate. So C and D are input for the AND gate, uh, and the output of the AND gate is connected on input 2. So here is a NOR gate. Uh, so we have two inputs, C and D, uh, connected to the NOR gate, then output of the NOR gate is connected to input 1. In this way, we can design any Boolean function with some size multiplexer.